Welcome. This session provides an updated look at the Community of Inquiry conceptual framework, which undergirds much of modern online learning research. It also invites participants to consider, discuss, and potentially create an expanded view of this framework in the context of Ashford University's research in teaching and learning. The Community of Inquiry model was developed in the late 1990s by Randy Garrison, Terry Anderson, and Walter Archer, a group of researchers then working at the University of Alberta Edmonton in Alberta, Canada. Since then, this theoretical framework for situating research into the best practices for teaching and learning online has been used by thousands around the world. The model comprises three presences, social presence, teaching presence, and cognitive presence. These presences reflect the three primary interaction elements in online learning between students and each other, between instructor and students, and between students and content. In recent years, there have been calls to expand this model beyond the three presences. These calls for expansion include adding an element of learner agency and the aspect of emotional presence. The session will include a brief presentation of the Community of Inquiry model a brief description of the recent discussion in the community of its expansion, and an opportunity to discuss how the model might be revised to reflect current theory and practice of online learning at Ashford University. Hello, I'm Lori Williams. I serve as a professor in the College of Education at Ashford University. I recently served as provost for about three years beginning in the fall of 2013. I'm happy to share with you a little about the community of inquiry model as a conceptual framework for research in online learning. The community of inquiry began with Canadian researchers. Over time, others came to include Phil Ice, formerly of American Public University and now an independent consultant and researcher, Karen Swan of the University of Illinois Springfield, and Peter Shea of the State University of New York, Albany. I thought it might be fun to put some faces with the names and help you see that these are real people. As I mentioned earlier, the Community of Inquiry model began in Canada in the late 1990s. It was funded through a Canadian Social Sciences and Humanities Research Project. The three primary components of the Community of Inquiry are social presence, cognitive presence, and teaching presence. I'll share more about these components a little later in the presentation. And I'll begin now by sharing a bit more about how the Community of Inquiry is a framework that includes a theory, methods, and instruments to support online learning research. First and foremost, it's important to understand that the model is inherently collaborative and constructivist. The community of inquiry is a generic theoretical framework that must be viewed as a means to study collaborative constructivist educational transactions, be they in online, blended, or face-to-face -face environments. The validation of this framework would also suggest that it can be used as a rubric to test for functioning communities of inquiry. In the slides that follow, I'll share about the methods and instruments for testing. It's also important to know that the degree of each aspect of presence, cognitive, social, and teaching, shifts over time in actual practice during the administration of a course. For example, social presence may be stronger at first in a blended design. Using the community of inquiry model or conceptual framework, researchers like those I introduced to you earlier have developed a theoretical basis, methods, and instruments. I mentioned the assumption of the collaborative and constructivist nature of learning. There are also three presences that form the model, teaching presence, social presence, and cognitive presence. The method employed in the community of inquiry research is most often a content analysis of the online discussions as well as any other learning artifacts in the classroom. The types of utterances, using sentences or phrases as the unit of measure, are analyzed and coded by the researcher to fall into one of three presences. Another method in which students share perceptions about the presences is a self-report survey. I've shared a link here to the Community of Inquiry survey, and on the next slide I'll show the coding template for researcher use in content analysis. Here's the coding template showing the categories within the three presences, as well as some examples of the indicators of these presences within the categories. This is a widely used diagram showing the three presences and how they intersect. 
The overlap of social and cognitive presence is supporting discourse. The overlap of cognitive and teaching presence is regulating learning. The overlap of teaching and social presence is setting climate. All of this takes place in a context that includes the communication medium, the educational context, the standards of the academic discipline employed, and the applications of learning. At the center, of course, is the educational experience. The definition of teaching presence from Anderson, Rort, Garrison, and Archer, 2001, is the design, facilitation, and direction of cognitive and social processes for the purpose of realizing personally meaningful and educationally worthwhile learning outcomes. Some examples of indicators for teaching presence are discourse facilitation, direct instruction, and instructional design and organization. The definition of cognitive presence from Garrison, Anderson, and Archer 2001 is the extent to which learners are able to construct and confirm meaning through sustained reflection and discourse. The primary indicators of cognitive presences are applying learning and reflecting on learning, as well as the four stages of the practical inquiry model, which support discourse. The triggering event is usually the discussion prompt in the assignment. Students then explore and discuss, connect ideas and tentative conclusions or solutions, and then resolve the problem and apply new knowledge and ideas. The definition of social presence, according to Garrison 2011, is the ability to identify with the group or course of study, communicate purposefully in a trusting environment, and develop personal and effective relationships progressively. Examples of indicators for social presence include effective expression like humor and emoticons, open communication such as complimenting and agreeing, and group cohesion, which is facilitated by using names and correct pronouns and mentioning the learning goal in the context of individual contribution. Keep in mind that all of these are just examples. Using the Community of Inquiry framework for studying learning has been widely documented, and there are several references listed at the end of this presentation that use the framework. Here on this slide is a concept map that expands on the Community of Inquiry framework, developed by Joop von Schi. It's so big that it's hard to see on one screen. So I included a link to it so you can see the full version and explore it a bit on your own. What I like about it is that it shows more detailed aspects and examples of how to use the framework. In recent years, two new possible presences have been discussed by researchers. These include those from Peter Shea and his colleagues that the community of inquiry lacks the critical role of the learner herself or himself. This includes some pieces that you see here on the slide around learner agency, including self-reflection, self-regulation, and self-monitoring. Similarly, Marty Cleveland Innes and her colleagues have argued for emotional presence, separate from social presence, as indicated in the modified community of inquiry model depicted here. Personally, I would love to see Ashford form study groups to review the existing research and propose new studies. We have large-scale sample sizes and short classes with our high enrollment, so we can easily demonstrate statistical significance and replicate quickly. What do you think about the Community of Inquiry framework? Have you used it? How might we expand on it in our own research with respect to learner presence or emotional presence? Much of the retention research is focused at Ashford on self-regulation and self-efficacy, Perhaps we could expand on the learner presence component of the community of inquiry model. Here are some references for further research on your own. Here are some additional. Thanks for checking out this presentation. Please feel free to contact me with any questions or comments.